Hiya guys and welcome back to Aid's Workshop. Uh, and in this episode, as the title suggests, we're going to be on the rotary table. Um, we're going to finish off the part that we made in last week's episode, which was the May Bank Holiday Fun episode. I'll put a link to the previous episode in the description below. Um, but yeah, we're going to be finishing off that part using the rotary table. So no time like the present, let's jump straight to it. So going back on the last episode, um, I think it was the May Bank Holiday Fun episode, uh, we started making this component part of a tool that I'm going to be making. Sometimes you need to make a tool to make a tool, uh, if that makes sense. It, well, it will uh, as this video goes forward. So basically, I want to mount this on my rotary table and cut a full radius around sort of uh, well, 180, probably about 200 degrees of this part and blend it out to this space. There is some material to come off this space. So I've just placed my rotary table. As you can see, it's loose on the bed of the mill. Um, so I want to pick up around that 15 mil reamed hole and basically machine around the outside. Now the problem I got with that, I was I had to put it on some packing or I'd be machining into the top of my table. And I always find, um, I've got these sort of little T-nuts that go in the slots here. The slots on this particular rotary table are 45 degrees to zero. So it's pretty much set on zero at the moment. And as you can see, they're, they're not in line with the mill. They're at 45 degrees. Issue I have with that, um, quite often, so when I want to clamp something in a particular position, in this case it's going to be over the centre of the centre as it were, um, the clamps never quite work out you know, where they're in the slots at the right place. Now I could make some special clamps I suppose, but uh, I think long term I think what I want to do is make a mounting plate that bolts onto this table like a sacrificial plate. Ideal world I'd have a piece of sort of half inch aluminium, maybe three quarter aluminium, the diameter of the table and I can just put four bolts in four corners, bolt it down and then I can do what I like with it. Um, you know, drill tap holes wherever clamps are got to go. You know, it, it can be a, a work in progress. Every time you need a new hole, you just drill and tap one. I, I'd probably stick with something like M6, M8, something like that, but we'll see. Right, okay, so that said, um, I found this piece of aluminium, which we'll have to do. It's the sort of only, without using a huge piece, it's the only uh, appropriately sized piece. As you can see with the four slots, something will work out. I'll probably put some countersunk M8 screws in four corners and then the central bit will do whatever I like. So I think I'm going to take the rotary table off, just square this block up, put some chamfers on it maybe, and then look at positions for four um, M8, I think, clearance holes, countersunk for M8 bolts, M8 Allen bolts, and we'll get that sorted first.
So I'm just going to pull this clamp out of the way so I get a better idea of what I want. Okay, so uh, yeah, the uh, four holes enabled me to clamp it down onto the rotary table. I did mark an X in the middle as a reference to get central about and where I was 40 mil out because uh, I didn't want these counterboards to break out of the surface. I just dropped the, the four squares back to 37, 37s instead of 40. Okay, so when I come to machine this around, um, Obviously, this 15 mil ream hole is going to be centre about. So I need to clamp it in some way on here, onto this plate, um, that's going to work for me. And I have got some small clamps that work with M8. So I think if we had an M8 hole, let's say, uh, something like one there, that would do a clamp into there with a bolt. And uh, a coming I'm machining to here uh, and I'm machining right into here so I think uh, it's going to be cutting a bit fine maybe okay what I'll do is I'll put an M8 one about here I won't do that one and I'll put his brother on the back over here so something like that okay so that would be two M8 tapped holes okay um, so when I come to do the other end, well, are those holes going to work as well? I'm going to be rotating it round, and yes, that'll clamp there, yes, that'll clamp there, and allow me to round off the end of that. So, yeah, that will work for both ends. So, um, yeah, nothing uh, fancy here, just straight in with a drill bit or a 6.8. I'll pick up the centre of these holes roughly. I'm going to have to slide that parallel out from under there. That's all right, I can still get my clamp on. That'll be fine. Just okay. So yeah, good old Wilco's garden sprayer. I've been using it for a couple of years now with WD-40, and it's still going strong. So. That one. Looks good. Okay, um, I think I'll tap those by hand. Uh, I'll countersink them by hand on the table here on a piece of wood. I'll show you that. So I'll just countersink the underside first. As you can see, piece of wood on my table. Uh, I'm gonna have to bring my head down to touch. Okay. off the underside. I've already done the four holes there so just put a couple on there to get the thread below surface and I'll hand tap the two M8 holes. So you can probably see here uh, my bolts um, obviously that would be maximum length they're going to bottom out on the bottom of the T-slot there and they're about three mil too long 
I'm going to reduce the bolt length by about 5mm on the four bolts. So here we are, I took 4mm off the bolt and now we've got a couple of mil clearance. So they were close but uh, needed a bit of them. So before we do anything, I need to line my spindle up on the centre of the rotary table. Right, okay, so where are we? High, 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 high. Okay, so it's high on this side. Okay, if I move right worse, go the other way and with Y. Okay, I think we're back to X now. Worse the other way. Very nearly there. And wrong way. I'm just moving X and Y. Too much. Okay, that's uh, basically that's as close as I'm going to get. So I'm less than 0 0.01 mil. Well, I'm about well one complete division looking at it, which is 0 0.01 millimeters. Um, I'm more than happy for that for what I'm doing at the moment. I'm not doing any jig boring operations, anything like that. So I picked up the centre of the bore. So I'll go to my DRO now. And I'll go into Absolute and I'll set everything zero zeros. So okay, as you can see, the plate bolted down onto the slots, onto the T-slots, no problem at all. So a little bit of a cheat to pick the part up. I've got nothing tightened down. Just put the 15mm reamer back in and it's right down almost on the plate. Uh, just to locate the part centrally about on the rotary table. But, so that's a bit of a cheat. What I'm going to do going forwards when I've finished is I'm going to uh, drill and ream a quarter, and not a quarter, a six mil hole in this little fixture plate. And I could always then say I had a piece or a part like this. I could turn up a little bobbin with a six mil on the one side and a 15 mil diameter and use that as a location pin to drop the part on. And in much the same way, I could flip it round the other way, and with it being a 10mm hole the other way, make a little bobbin with a 10mm to 6mm, and I could drop it over that. So I can always pick up on this plate. But what I will have to do going forward, if I've got that reamed hole, is clock the reamed hole in to move this plate around in relation to the rotary table. Okay, so that's where I'm going to go going forward. Um, so that's the first part of setting it up. I uh, I had to use a little block of the same thickness for this uh, clamp. So if I just take this back over here, I'm going to have to clock um, this space um, parallel to uh, the, the the motion of the bed. Uh, yeah, so I'll clock this space up now. I'm going to have to probably put a, a clock down on the y-axis and bring a clock in here somewhere and clock it so that it's true but as you can see I can move it around no problem okay so I got the appropriate 8 mil cutter set up which will give me the 4 mil rad I'm looking for around in this corner back here um, my zero zero is at 8 degrees um, so I've marked the line 8 degrees and I'm on zero as far as rotation okay um, I'm just going to come around to sort of this corner area somewhere by rotating I'm no the datum of zero so I'm going to wind off just to a point where I miss this corner because um, we're going to take these two corners off first I'm going to come down and touch the table set a zero okay that's that done and I'm going to come back maybe point one off touching my fixture there we are I'll set that and lock the quill uh, lock the head as well right okay so that depth is now set because um, I don't want to go gouging great big holes out of this new plate straight away. Um, so, yeah, basically, I'm going to rotate around and take these corners off. So, I think I'll do some conventional milling. Let's just check this one. Yeah, we're missing that one. And I've already given myself a mark of the 180, but it's not 180. 
it's uh, 188 which is uh, there okay so cutter is just long enough I'll come around this corner and I'm going to put the cut on using Y so I'm just going to touch here here we are just touch that corner it should be something similar when I come around to this one yeah just touching it that side is oversized this side half a millimeter okay so we'll put another cut on in Y and we're about 21 mil off center at the moment and pretty much our finishing cut is one going to be when it cleans up this short face Okay, so I've just roughed a bit of material off on the other end, or the other side, to get it somewhere near. And I'm just going to, at the zero degrees, wind the cutter in. Until I get a touch, I, I moved about 0.1 then, so I don't want to take too much as a finishing cut, so I'm just going to rough that out. Um, You'll see when it comes round here uh, that I've dug in right round and into that area there and I've just undercut that face by yeah just a, a half mil uh, because there is half mil left on that face so I'm going right round I should when I hear the squeal the spot background again which is my zero mark which is there and just I'm touching that's it. No more. Final cut around this radius. It will be machining this face. Just got to get in shot. Run that cutter back round. I think we'll call it. I wonder what that intersection looked like it doesn't look like anything because I can't even see an intersection between that flat and that radius okay so um, it's just been around you can see the Radius runs right way around the outside, beyond the 180, and in to a point that looks just about half a mil below the surface of that face, which is where I wanted it to go. So when I machine along this space, I'll do it with the side of an 8 mil cutter uh, until I blend in into that intersection where I've just cut there, and obviously to the right thickness. So before I take this part off, 
just going to take my cutter back directly back to the zero zero mark so much the same setup on this end I use a 10 mil reamer to locate the hole the 10 mil reamed hole in the middle and I'm basically offsetting Y again and I keep bringing it back step by step until at the straight angle I get a touch on that datum face which is the flat face so yeah we should be about a mil millimeter to go now in fact I just did a little bit of a tick there I could be very very close I'm just going to run that cut around the 180 degrees right round the side parallels getting in the way sorry guys I have to play with the clamping a little bit this way round so I've made a little black mark on my uh, rotary table with a sharpie and round to zero so that's the spot I'll just run it back around the other way get rid of the worst of the swarm. No zero marks coming up now. And there. Okay. So, I think we'll call that done, as it's still making a little squeaking noise when I get to the zero. I'll just do a little spring cut around there, and I still need to do this space at this dimension. So I'm going to come around to my zero degrees, lock the rotary table there okay I'm just going to take the cutter up out of the way at that point and I'm going to remove the complete clamp from this side that should give me access Okay, let's just stop that cutter. I've got a depth setting set. So I'm going to be relying on one clamp this time. Um, so I'm going to come back off that dimension and just keep scratching along this space as if I was just milling it conventionally. So I've got a reference point of where that was um, and I'm point six off it. So I'm just going to scoot along here until it stops cutting, which will be somewhere across here. Bearing in mind I left a little bit on this space when I machined it before. Speed that up a little. In fact, just give it a little bit of WD on the surface. Try and keep this swarp out of the way. So you can see there where I finished the cut. I'm just going to drop that down to that intersection point, which is where I was when I cut the rad using the DRO. And that's just tickling across the surface there. stop cutting here somewhere there we are so I've got two thou left on and there's just the slightest of witness marks there so we're on the right track I'm going to uh, come down into this corner there's slightly larger witness marks so I overcooked it a little but that's not important it doesn't actually do anything in the finished uh, part, but that will 
come to light a bit further on. I could, theoretically, I could cheat a little to get that intersection correct by rotating the rotary table perhaps a, a few minutes or seconds. Okay, so I'm going to go back the other way and put my finishing cut on in the same direction. I'm just going to run that back as a spring and see what it looks like. Just the lightest of sprays with WD-40 just to give that surface a coating. I think we're going to be pretty close. In fact, I think we've nailed it actually. I think we've got that corner blended in beautifully. This may be the last cut, we shall see. The cutter's just scratching the surface of the sacrificial plate down this end. So we'll have to have a look uh, at maybe flashing that over with it on the table. We'll see. Yeah, that, I'm very pleased with that. Now I can let that run beyond the zero now and off the end because we're in a straight plane. So let's just well, even though Let's have a look. Even though my figures on the DRO show that there's two thou left to come off it. Am I going to leave it alone or take it to the numbers? Doesn't matter. Um, but that hole will be offset in here if I don't. <laughs> yeah, let's take the two thou off. Well, I've taken this final tooth out, and as you can see, we've caught that intersection there with the 8mm rad, or 8mm rad? Yes, 4mm uh, rad, I should say. Uh, that's blended in nicely, and I've blended in spot on onto the one on the end. So, yeah, I'm really pleased with that. Um, so, the next thing to do is this big slot in the end. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going to look into that. I may change the dimensions slightly. So, I've decided. While I've got it up, I'm just going to take a 0.1 skim off the top of this plate. I've changed over to a 12mm cutter just to speed things up a bit. But yeah, I'm just going to take 0.1 off it all the way over, and I'm going to be stepping over 10mm. Um, yeah, just because I can see it's not quite setting or sitting level. Here we are. Last little pass across top. Okay, so I'm going to break down the rotary table now, take it off and move on to the next step. So I want to pick up the middle in Y of this part now. I'll just wind across, got my wobbler on there. Come over till we get a touch. Should be any second now. Okay. Set my white to zero. Let's go to the other side. Touch on this side. Come on. Just creeping up on it, it's about to go. There it goes. Right, Y function half, 10.620, so go to zero on my DRO. Add block Y. Okay. 
Um, so now my spindle is in the center this way. I can take my wobbler out. I'm going to use my original slot which was 9mm. Uh, uh, was 8mm, sorry, by 25mm deep. I think the 25 deep's alright. Let's just, what colour have I got in there? I've got a 9mm cutter. Um, oh, that fits. 9mm cutter that's long series. I'm gonna, obviously, I needed a longer cutter than my 8. I think I'm quite happy to put a 9mm cutter down through the middle of there. So that's the way I'm going to go. So. I can actually install that, well, pre-install it before I screw it on, as long as you put the collet in the nut first, before you put the cutter in, and that'll be absolutely fine. I'll take my spanners, tighten up the collet, and I think, where are we? Let's take the quill right up, let's bring the head down. I'm going to do this in a series of packs and then open it out by point one. Let's start there. Okay, so um, I want to come up on the end until I get a touch. I do want a radius in the bottom, hence why I'm doing it this way and not uh, doing it vertically. So move in till I get a touch. I might be low centre, yes. There, that will do. Set my X to zero. I'm going to come back up, get a touch on the top somewhere, come on, I'll do, set that to zero, um, I think I'll take, I don't know, two mil passes, we'll see what that's like. Okay, Ooh, that's a bit fast. See how this behaves. Everything's tight, my vice is tight, cut is tight. A bit of a WD 40 just for luck. And I basically stop when I get the 25 on the DRO. Just do a dummy check. Yes, that does look in the middle. Seems to be behaving itself beautifully. Twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, and beat the last bit. I'm back out again. Where's my little brush? Where's my swap brush gone? Okay, so that's the start. Well, I think I will go down in two mil packs. Well, there's the finished component, guys. Um, quite happy with how that turned out. Um, yeah, something different. Bit of uh, work on the rotary table. Um, I haven't revealed what it is yet. Um, I wonder if anyone can guess what this is going to be part of. It'll be operating something like that. Um, but as I say, it's not finished yet. Well, yeah, um, pleased with how it all turned out in the end. Um, it's one part of many that are going to make up a useful tool for the mill. Can anyone, um, can anyone suss out what it is yet? Anyway, there we are. We'll leave you with that one. Anyway, as usual, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And we will see you all very soon. Cheers now.